and we don't know how much we're getting in. I'm bringing this up, and I don't know if Shane wants to address that one particular issue or not. But so. uh, just real quickly, uh, he had two camps, so he had 14, he had 14 and 13. So it's an 80-20 split with those. So we actually take in 20% of the revenue, takes an 80. So you're looking at one camp. There was two camps during that period of time. Okay. Two is that a competitive? That's what everybody. Yeah, the specialty camps, our in-house camps. Obviously, we make all the money. We and, retain all the money. And we pay the insurance and the promotion. Uh, out uh, of they do a lot of the promotional stuff themselves. We didn't do any promo extra promotional stuff for that camp at all. Uh, it seems to be a pretty sweet deal. I, I uh, was shocked to see this. Uh, I mean, I. Well, somebody else is teaching the class. We don't really do anything, and we get twenty percent of the money, so it works out pretty well for us for the specialty camp. Well, you know, once again, I mean, I, I would like to say we are here for the purpose of Marinwood, not for the purpose of hiring for outside our district or services outside our district. Uh, okay, I, I don't have anything more to say at this time. Um, so I'll call. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar as amended. Anybody second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have to abstain from here. You know, technically you don't have to abstain. I will anyway. Okay. <laughs> We still three votes. We'll get Public it. comment, open time for agenda items not on the agenda. Sure. Um, anybody? Uh, yeah, so tonight is about money. It's about the future of the CSD and really where we're going. Um, I don't know if the pension folks will be here or not, but I am concerned about that particular issue because our obligations become our taxes. And if we are not collecting enough taxes or collecting enough fees, putting them towards the use of the betterment of the district or capital expenses, we're going to be stuck with the bill. That's the 1,700 homes that are in Marinwood, not the vast areas that we serve. Uh, I think we are, have kind of lost our way. Marinwood supports the parks. Everyone else, in my opinion, is a customer, okay? And we should uh, apply pricing like their customers. Now, it doesn't mean we have to gouge them, but we, we need to recover the cost. And um, if they're gonna uh, take advantage of, say, our pool, we should have enough revenue coming in so we can set aside money to fix up the pool. That shouldn't just go on 1,700 homes. That's all I have to say. Anybody else? Only once, only twice. District Matters, Fiscal Year 2016-17 audit engagement with R.J. McCartney. Yeah, I've included in here uh, the engagement letter recently received from RJR. They uh, have obviously performed our audit for you know, probably going on six years, I believe now, uh, certainly through my time. However, I would recommend utilizing them for this upcoming year, again, primarily pointing back to our accounting transition uh, with uh, moving out the county and into in the QuickBooks. They uh, you know, gave the audit and a lot of guidance as we moved into our transitional year. Now that we've completed a fiscal year, I would think it would be beneficial, would certainly be beneficial to me to bring them in as they were familiar with what we were intending to do, how we were doing it in the audit, how we actually did it. Uh, not to mention, I think we've made a lot of movement on their findings, uh, observations, and recommendations, and I would like to uh, close those out. Go ahead. Um, are their charges comparable to prior years? Uh, it's exactly the same. Okay. Um, I totally agree with you um, that given our transition, accounting transition, they are probably the best choice for an accountancy to do our audit this year. However, going forward, I would I would entertain uh, you know looking to other um, 
accountants for it or uh, what are they called? Accounting firms. Auditing firms, thank you very much. A for the cost reason, B for uh, just to have a fresh set of eyes. I know the rules are the same, they are not going to change. Everybody sees different things. Yeah. Um, and it's considered a best practice to change your auditing firm approximately every five years. So um, I am also in favor of keeping them for another year simply because of the accounting transition, um, their familiarity, and it would be nice to have some consistency while we look at our first year under the new accounting system. I do find some of their um, submission to be rather comical. Um, we will not express an opinion or provide any information, yada, yada, yada. The objective of our audit is the expression of opinions. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times they contradict <laughs> themselves in this thing. But having said that, um, and knowing, uh, is it Mr. O'Connor, right? Um, you know, they've, they've done us, uh, you know, some good deeds in the past. I think we can um, certainly avail ourselves of their expertise uh, for another year before we put it out for competitive bids. Thank you. Sir? No comment? No comment. Uh, any comments from the public? Steven? Um, yeah, we used to, we had another firm about four years ago, and they delivered a very bad report. Um, uh, and then they went back to Riccardi, and the, the reports became better again. I I'm fully support with Isabella and Jeff just said, you need another set of eyes. Um, also, um, I, I do want you to pay attention. I think it's, this is not an unimportant issue, uh, the issue of revenue and accounting for revenue. I just never heard of the report. So the money's coming in, where is that money going? I mean, it seems pretty basic, but if we don't have that information, then we don't really have a, an accounting statement. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. motion? I want to approve the um, um, an engagement with recording for our uh, 1617 audit. I'll, I'll second that. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, should we handle two and three in the same vein? Because they seem to be, uh, what are we approving here? Well, for the so I would handle them separately, personally. Okay. Yeah, we'll just take them one at a time. So number two is uh, the County Grand Jury Report draft response um, to Marin's retirement health care benefits. The money is still isn't there. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, you know, as background, as everybody's aware, um, they've released, actually they've released a slew of reports, all kind of in the last two months of the year. These are two that the district was asked to respond to. They're the only two that I'm aware of at this point in time the district has been asked to respond to. Uh, these draft responses in here are fairly straightforward and consistent with how the majority of the way we've responded in the past as well as the way other agencies have responded in the past. Uh, this is certainly up for discussion. This is, uh, they have to be discussed in a public setting and they can be modified very uh, uh, easily prior to submission. Uh, so by all means, please, any comments, thoughts, questions, additions, edits? Isabella? Um, I overall uh, found it to be a very good response. Uh, thank you for putting it together. Um, on item R9, um, I don't know if Ford would agree, but I would suggest to offer that um, our district is currently in negotiations and the cost containment of um, OPEB is our top priority. I don't know if the, the sort of summary sheet in front is a standard form that is filled with blanks in or what? Right? Yes, the front page it is very much a standard form that is uh, provided through the Attorney General's office. Okay, I well, I, I would, a couple of things though. 
in the recommendations numbered one, two, four, six through eight, I suggest you do one, two, four, six, seven, and eight, just to be clearer. In the next line, just to be grammatically correct, R5 has, not have. And it says will be implemented in the future. It just seems that isn't particularly informative to anybody about what's happening. And I don't know if it's if that's the way it's supposed to be done, but it seems like something a little more explanatory uh, wouldn't hurt. Yeah, all I can say is on this cover page, again, this comes directly from uh, the, the district did not make this. This is a fill in the blank um, standard template. Okay, because so they request we provide. And that's why we include the uh, letter to follow. Yeah, I understand that. Because the third item, uh, I think the text is somewhat inconsistent with what it says. Uh, the, the form is almost like taking a stick and poking it at them in the eye, where at least in your follow-on responses, uh, you're explaining what you're doing or trying to do. And if, but if these are the words they gave you, I guess uh, that's what we ought to do. They're the words they gave us. Uh, they, every agency is, is, again, standard kind of going to form. Uh, it's not even specific to the Marine Grand Jury. Again, I'm pretty sure this comes from the Attorney General, I think. I just followed the link. Okay, well that, that's my comments on that. Yeah. Um, the overall tone of the responses, I think, um, speaks to the fact that this board, since we've been seated, has been paying close attention to OPEB and also to pension liabilities. Um, as a refresher for those of you who have not heard this before, um, OPEB <coughs> unfunded liabilities exceed our annual budget. Um, the ARC, or the annually required contribution for these post-employment health care benefits, approaches approximately 9% of our annual budget. Um, in context, the park department all by itself is about 12% of our budget. So you can see that these post-employment benefits are starting to become an extremely um, critical expenditure for this district and one that we cannot afford. Fortunately, OPEB at this point, the annual required word is a misnomer. They are not annually required. In other words, we do not have to pay cash every year in order um, to fund those. However, by not doing so, the unfunded liability that goes to our balance sheet and will be reported from this point forward will grow mag you know, by magnitude. Um, if it's 6.47 million now, and we don't put that 9% um, of our budget into an account, okay, it's going to probably be 7.5 million by next year. So, um, <clears throat> do not beat a dead horse. Cost containment has to be a critical portion of what we are looking at, or a critical um, negotiating point um, as we move forward. These um, post employment benefits are unsustainable. And I am not at all in favor of passing these on to our taxpayers. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Anybody else? From the public? Um, well, uh, first of all, uh, I uh, also endorse what Bert said. If you're saying you're going to do something in the future, gosh, lots of things happen in the future. It is actually a meaningless statement. And, um, I believe that if you really want to tackle this, you have to have a plan, plan of action, and that includes dates of completion. It, it's it's a you know it's time to 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 you know muscle down and get this done. I do um, believe we can do a lot we to to get on top of this, but it will require. Um, Better discipline, better, you know, you gotta know where, what money's coming in. I mean, that seems to be pretty basic. We, we also, uh, I believe, it, it's my impression that most of our services are consumed with basically people that are not part of the Marinewood CSD. That's fine. We should encourage that. But we should ask those people, we should price those people differently than our our uh, members of the CSD. 
Um, I have some ideas for that where you could still generate uh, some income, but basically what it means is we start charging uh, higher pricing for, uh, for some of the stuff that we're doing that's extra. Um, we're, we're not, uh, even though we're a public agency, we can look at this as a business and think of it as a business as it pertains to the outside consumers. Um, and I would encourage that before I would encourage, oh, say, going bankrupt or going to the, the, the uh, voters for more taxes. Because as you all, we're, we're all taxpayers. We all know that we're getting a bunch of taxes this year. And you know, it's getting to be way too much. And pretty soon the camel's back's gonna break. So anyhow, so that's actually an optimistic view of what we can do. Um, well, w what didn't you hear? I'll be happy to specify. Uh, there's no real need right now, Steve. I would like to uh, well, if you make, a motion. make a motion to approve the uh, uh, grand jury report response as presented. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. I suggested some changes to the first sheet. I guess that wasn't the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's in motion. Wait, wait a minute. Were you suggesting changes to the um, the form that we replied to, or to the response to the that form. Eric Just as I said, to, to add our seven in the first one. Recommendation oh, okay. Let me to amend. change yeah, get the sorry, grammar right in the second one. Okay. Let me least. amend my motion, please. Um, I move to um, approve as amended by Director Schwartz. squeeze, how will Marin fund its public employee pensions? Um, same kind of approach, as I said, a little bit more of a uh, lead-in uh, commentary prior to getting to the recommendations on this one, but if there are uh, any questions, as I was rereading it, I did catch one uh, grammatical error that I will fix, but it doesn't change the substance of anything. Actually, I do have something to change the substance of the grand jury data. Exhibit F, the grand jury appears to have reflected the safety portion of our, um, of our pension without adding in the miscellaneous employee contribution. If you refer to the um, year-end 2016 audit, um, you'll see that there's approximately $83,600 um, that, that accrues to the miscellaneous employee um, group and that would change the total to $405,470 and a 6.9% factor as opposed to a 5.5% factor. I think that we should uh, essentially let the uh, grand jury know that um, they need to include that as well. I can incorporate that in the opening. Uh that would fall and be above the recommendations. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know how that would apply specifically to one of the recommendations we're responding to, but I can certainly add it to the opening comments if Yeah, I just think that they'd probably be interested in knowing that they got it wrong. Got it wrong and maybe fix it. 
Um, that may also apply to pre previous year's audit statements if they made the same mistake. I didn't take the time to look at 2015 or before. But again, these unfunded liabilities are part of the reason that um, <clears throat> this district is headed towards, you know, as much as people um, do not want to hear the word bankruptcy um, without any meaningful conversations on the part of our uh, primarily our employee group to change the particularly the 350 pension costs uh, or pension plans that we've got on the books right now without any movement at all given the discount rate changes that are going to happen over the next three years that's exactly where we're heading it's not just a huge bubble of money that's going to be due 20 years from now it's also going to be a rising annual cash outlay that's going to compete with the funds that we bring into this district. And I can tell you right now, over the course of this last, I won't call them negotiations, but discussions, the firefighters, um, through what I am basically calling blind, uncommunicative, and poor employee group uh, leadership, have now lost probably their strongest advocate. I'm very disappointed in the way these things have gone. And unless my invitation to have this employee group come to us and start a meaningful dialogue about how we can contain these pensions, we are, our course is set. We're not gonna be able to, um, there's no way we're gonna be able to pass um, any referendum that's going to increase taxes to the extent that we can afford these pensions. And if we cannot do that, we're on our way to bankruptcy. I hate to say it, but that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, it's a very great point that uh, Jeff just made, but um, I think what, what I liked in, um, in this write-up was the paragraph about the forecast. I don't think the district has ever utilized uh, this tool before. I have never seen a, a long-range forecast of revenue expenses and kind of a nice uh, deep breath plan. So I'm, I would love to actually put it on the future agenda items. So um, one thing that I can say is um, when we started this whole conversation about pensions and the pension difficulties that we're in right now, leveraging the, um, the annual actuarial statement does come out with, okay, here, here's what the next five years are going to look like, okay? Next year's is going to come with, oh, by the way, we're changing the discount rate, you know, and that's the impact it's going to have. So those figures will be available to us in an actuarial report. If we can do a reasonable job of forecasting revenues over that same period, then we can calculate the amount, you know, the percentage that those pension costs are going to give us without, you know, putting our limited staff through a, you know, a detailed budgetary exercise. No, yeah, no, yeah. No, yeah. No. So that's something I think we can do. Are they giving you any indication as to when they might raise the discount rate? Because we're set for 17, 18, correct? Yeah, it's going to start raising at 18. Uh, 18, 18, 19, 19, 19, 19 20, 20, 20, 20. So we know what those numbers are yeah. minus, the, minus what the, is it the lower Yeah, rate we, we've presented that in previous meetings. But and it's also, also, you know, last time I looked, they also said, Here's the possible impact of these discounts. 30%, 40%, you know. 30% increase to the what we're gonna have to pay next year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's exactly. the first time I've heard that. That's yeah. substantial. Okay. Perfect. Right. Being the, the new guy on the board still, at least that's the way I feel. Uh, when you look, and I, I think we've talked about this earlier, but when we look at our budget, we don't look in bad shape. We have ex we show expenses, we show revenue, we show, and it comes out balanced or maybe even a little surplus. But in that isn't somehow included the the pension liabilities, and it makes us appear, at least to me it did originally, and it made to others 
that we have more money that could go to other things. Right. And then I don't know how that can be at least graphically shown, but well, I think that's legally the mandated. You know that, right? Next year. The GASBs are going to be legally mandated to show the balance sheet accounts as well as the income statement accounts. So those liabilities will be on the balance sheet and we are ha going to have to publish them. They previously were hidden in the notes yes. that people were not really looking at. Right. Again, that's not a current year revenue thing, but it's uh, what, what it does show is by um, virtue of not putting enough money away, i.e. cash out the door, mm -hmm. that this liability in the future continues to grow. And one of the things that this grand jury report has just demonstrated is we are already negative in terms of our assets versus our liabilities. And it will continue to get worse. But, but it's my concern is if someone just looks at our budget, we don't look like we're in bad shape. And that's why and that's we want to we want to have revenues on the I mean sorry, reserves on the budget and actually put the money in an account so it takes it away from the profit, so yes. to speak, and also that we take um, OPEB and we start to pay that down so it doesn't look like we're wildly profitable when the fact is we're not. Exactly. Anything else? Not on this subject. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any comments from the public? Stephen? Yes, I want to thank uh, Jeff and the rest of you for the, the cold splash of water. We need it. Let's do it every month for short, which is every month for a while. So to motivate us to do the right things, I too believe that it's a moral obligation that we fulfill uh, our promises. Um, and we really should be doing everything we can. Now, with regards to the fire department, um, I kind of I take the view of Bill Hansel, uh, who was trying to work something out with uh, San Rafael. He said, you know, we're saving them uh, a uh, fire uh, station. I figure that's worth two, three million dollars a year. The amount of services are fire department and our rec department spends outside our district is, it's good that we're serving that, but we're, it's, the, the, the uh, costs need to be assessed. I would say, as part of your negotiation, and just something to put everyone on notice, that you form a committee or whatever and see what other realistic options there are for you know, bringing in Cal Fire, a private fire company, or utilizing one of the, the other cities uh, for fire services. I just don't see that we have a sustainable model uh, for that. And, and, um, and likewise, I think we just need to just bear down on the cost structure and our pricing structure and just make sure, uh, you know, we're getting enough money in. We're doing great. Uh, the, the rec department's doing absolutely fantastic. But I have the sense that there's so much leakage going on that could really, uh, we could put to the bottom line to start paying off these benefits. And we really owe it to ourselves and our employees to do the best we can financially to secure them the futures that they uh, justly deserve. Thanks. Thank you. I would qualify by that, that by saying, a reasonable future. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Not yeah, a reasonable future. Yeah. I, I, I hate to agree with Stephen. I just sound good. Okay, okay. I just sound good. Yeah, you're not agree. I can tell you that the, the future operation of the fire department is something that the fire commission is going to begin working on next month. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments? Call for a motion. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the response to the um, budget squeeze uh, to grand jury report as amended. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the district manager report. Sure. Um, so today, spent 
probably about six hours with representatives from FEMA, Homeland Security, and now OBS. There's four people in total. We visited all uh, one, two, three, four, five sites that we had listed on our claim. Uh, we literally walked out of Pawnee. Uh, Chief drove them up Queenstone Fire Road, went over to the slide at the Idleberry Trail. How far up? They took the mule, we went up about a, a little over a mile. That's a, you, you hit the big red. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, one of the ladies got so scared she got out and walked. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, and then both the sites here on the creek. Um, well, you know, it was a fine meeting and it went good and they went through and took a lot of documentation and a lot of pictures. It is you know, much as Herb alluded to at the very beginning, a process. Um, they will start creating their reports. Those reports will go up the ladder and to their organizations. Eventually they will get to me for a review and comment, uh, at which point they will be sent back, and then at which point somebody will make an eligibility determination on each of the sites. Could they give you any no. estimated time no. of any of the arrival? I felt like huge bureaucracy was in play. Uh, yeah, it, they, uh, you know, these were just, again, inspectors and people coming out. They made several mentions to how uh, the process has changed over the last year and uh, everybody's getting used to it and it seemed like it was a much more streamlined process in the past and uh, so on and so forth. So it, uh, it, uh, you know, it's where we're at. I'm waiting on those reports then so we can find out which of these sites are eligible in terms of uh, the work back here it did give us a good chance to kind of get back out and see where some of these things are. Um, the two creek locations seem to be holding actually incredibly well. Um, as they went through there, I've reached out to another engineering group called A3 Geo. Um, they are a geological, geotechnical engineering group out of the East Bay to see if they would have an interest. I'm waiting to hear back from them to come out and run the geotech studies that we would need done so that way we can go out to a civil engineer and work on a fix, um, primarily for the one behind the pool house here. A fix to be done before the next rainy season or not? Um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to move it that fast. What's, um, so we'll be asking them of the risk of having a repeat of last winter without doing anything. Would that be a true statement? Um, well, I mean, the way I they look at it is this is a reimbursement program anyway. I it's understand. It's a that. matter of the studies, the designs, the permitting, mm -hmm. everything else. It's going to be out of pocket, I understand. Yeah, that, correct. You know, for a period of time. Right. My point is this. I'd rather pay out of pocket for the fix than pay out of pocket to lift the pool back up, or the pool house back up from the creek. Sure. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, if we have another winter like we had last year, is anyone able to say, you know what, you're at risk? You need to do something now. That's exactly why we're trying to have these geotechnical yeah. firms come out and do the earth studies. I've been waiting on that. Basically, I'm walking away from the North Pacific at this point in time because uh, even after my reach outs and them saying, yes, I'll have somebody next week, and then I also have other uh, highly noted uh, you know, Rachel Kamen, who's a local hydrology engineer, basically uh, had followed up with me on where we're at. She said, look, if you can wait for Miller Pacific, wait for them, they're really good. And I basically said, yeah, I'm done waiting. So now we're reaching out to some of these other firms and we're going to bring them out. Everybody recommended Miller Pacific. They're too slammed. And this is just a job they obviously aren't incredibly interested in performing yeah. for us. Okay. Um, you, may, uh, you mentioned you uh, keep track of the expenses and yes. amount. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the rough estimate of uh, what we're out of pocket right now? Oh, very little. Uh, very little. Nobody, you know, again, I'm waiting on a proposal for them to perform the study. So when they've come out and visited the sites, they haven't done anything. We have some supplies that we've done, you know, building the fence, some uh, okay, so some force good. account labor, things along those lines. But uh, uh, I can't give you an exact total. I can tell you it's, it's minimal. Oh. With Miller Pacific as slammed as they are because of the storms, the contractors are all equally slammed. And even if we got plans ready to go in the next couple of weeks, there's no guarantee we're going to get anybody available or get a price that's reasonable. So that's a bit of a gamble. I know in years back I worked on an emergency project for county parks or an open space. And uh, the clock starts running, I think, when the declaration of emergency is declared. And then the 
in the case of this open space project, they took so long to get the wheels going from a federal and state level, by the time the county was ready to go, sorry, the money's too late, it expired, you're out of the program. It's, it's 18 months, there are certainly uh, extensions available as well. They're real good at uh, saying sorry. Right. Sometimes you're better off, if there was the money, I don't know if there is, gambling and, and moving on with the work without all the approvals so you can get it done. If, if that pool structure is that critical, and I believe it is, I think we need to at least look at that possibility. Trying to get a geotech out as quick as we can. I mean, that's kind of what, that's the first step, and that's what any of the engineering groups have said is you need to run a geotechnical report on this, and uh, finding somebody to come out and do it has been a challenge. I'm open to more companies, or if you want to send me some more, uh, I will blast this thing out to everybody. Any other comments? Open to the public, Stephen? Yeah, um, I think Jeff made a really excellent point that we don't want to be uh, dealing with the second disaster. I'm wondering uh, if there should be planning right now to an emergency shoring up, I don't know, you know, like there was a pending storm with sandbags and, and uh, uh, timber uh, to just in the event that we do have a bad uh, uh, situation. Uh, maybe we can there's no reason why we should have this risk extended indefinitely. We can at least mitigate it. Um, and uh, so I guess what I'm saying is just contingency planning would be appropriate right now. Thank you. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. The pool, the pool pump house goes recreation programs go right down the drain, don't they? I mean, the pool's a, a huge cornerstone of our recreation programs, is it not? It would be a huge loss, yeah. yeah. That would be catastrophic. Right. I mean, we're talking about chlorine in the creek. Everything. Yeah. Environmental. Forget it. Revenues. That can't happen. It's fish we do it. We might have to oh, shut yeah. down the horseshoe pit. It's downwind. This will be bad. Pay attention. This will be bad. Any other comments from the public? Oh, may I? One. You know, Stevens suggesting that we have some stopgap measure ready to go. The kind of repair that that may take is taking a very large crane and parking on the edge of Lucas Valley Road and reaching over the top of the trees and drilling some holes and putting some large steel, steel beams in vertically and then either timber or concrete between those beams. It's a huge, I think it's going to be a relatively huge project and to, and I don't think you can even start to think about how to do anything about it until you get that geotechnical report. Okay. Well, well, I, I it isn't in the magnitude of sandbags and, and a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I, I defer to you. I, I defer to you. I obviously do know. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Eric. We're down to fire department. Fire activity summary and chief report. We did not have a fire commission meeting again in July. We had pancake breakfast plus a lot of fire commissioners were on vacation. But uh, hit a couple of highlights. Um, wildland season is upon us. Um, type 3 is up and running. All the wildland packs are in service. There's actually a couple of three major fires burning around the state. We were called the other day to see if we were available. We're currently not on the out of county strike team list just because of that. When captain's still out, I haven't replaced Joel's position. Caesar Korea just had twins. Congratulations to Caesar. Um, you know, one other guy's on vacation, so we're uh, we're taking care of Rimwood right now. We did complete the engineer's exam. <coughs> Jeff Smith was promoted on uh, Father's Day. He's the new engineer. He's doing a great job. Um, Electrically as well. What's that? Yeah. Well, he, Yes and no, because I won't tell you who we wired it wrong the first time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move past He discovered his mistake. Hey? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <clears throat> interesting enough, the surf trailer came in very handy that night because I ended up giving one of the generators out to a resident whose mother was on home oxygen oh. and her oxygen stopped working. And then we used the other generator here to get some lights going. Mm. So 
we fixed that problem. Sean, were you here? Sean was here that night. Yeah. Yeah, we made do. We problem solved it. And it wasn't <coughs> ideal, but we got through it. Um, finished up a couple of vegetation management projects. Um, I did hire David Purcell as a temporary firefighter. He starts medic school in a couple of weeks. I'll be able to keep him on as a temporary even while he's in medic school, um, just with how his scheduling works. So that's definitely helpful as we make our way through summer. Um, that's about it. Can you comment on uh, Captain Heine's staff? Only to say that Captain Heine is still off on his workers' comp injury, rehabilitating to return to work. It sounds I, like it's going longer than yeah. Yes. Um, his 48.50 time expires September 9th of this year. So I think we'll have some resolve either way shortly thereafter. I think Steve is still a little conflicted, um, much like Joel was. You know, you spent 30 years in the place and you like it there, and it's wildland season and you want to come back, but then you also have physical limitations and getting old and, you know, what, what's at risk if I do come back? So he's sorting through all that stuff personally. Um, you know, I'd love to have him back, but I don't know if it's going to work out. Time will tell. How do you feel the captains are acclimating themselves to being first line captains? I think they're actually doing pretty good. Um, we did go through a little bit of a new shift bid, shift bids on July 1st, so the shifts have been moved around a little bit. Um, we have a couple of new captains. We have a new engineer. You know, Sean Day is an acting engineer, still fairly new at the department, but um, I like having new guys around. They're very energetic and youthful. They like to get out there and work with the public. So, um, you know, all in all, knock on wood, uh, when the guys show up to work, they're doing a good job and they're in good spirits. So I commend them for that. Uh, you know, the staffing levels, guys are having to put in extra hours. We're still dealing with the kitchen, trying to figure out what to, go, what to deal with that. but. Uh, it never once has impacted attitude or effort level at the firehouse. So, experience, decision making, and that kind of thing. Yes, and they're both smart enough to know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. And there's older, you know, more tenured guys around coming over on captains on engine six or engine seven. I'm around, not that I know a whole lot more than them. The Seraphim battalion chief is always available to us. The Nevada battalion chief is always available to us. So, yeah, they're doing a good job in my opinion. Very good. That leads us to the kitchen remodel. Yes. Um, so there was a bit of a change in SB 854. I don't know if Eric touched on that anywhere. The threshold went from what was a thousand, it's up to twenty-five thousand dollars now. And can you not go through this whole process if you can get it for under twenty-five grand? I can tell you, as I did just receive a bid from John Boat Construction, who uh, Irv turned me on to. Very nice individual. We talked at length. I gave him a copy of the plans that the architect did. And he goes, yeah, yeah, we'll work with you. Yeah, we'll make it work. He's got a son who's a fireman in Southern Marin. And I got his bid today, and it was for $102,000. So I didn't bring it here to show you today. <laughs> Still on my desk. What, what happened to the first bid? What happened to the first bid? To the first bid. So. Now that we could. Yeah, well, I've called and emailed Christine, Christina, from that bid, and there was they didn't leave they didn't walk away from here on the best of terms for whatever reason they were kind of conflicted with what they were hearing from a lot of different people i'm reaching out to her see if it's still an option um, i was going to go through the Murray builders exchange to start trying to get a couple of additional bids um, the problem is if these bids are coming back at uh, over twenty five thousand dollars i'm just going to have to put out the rfp and we're going to have to do a sealed bid process and I'm, I'm getting that done next month because we're, we're four months plus now without a kitchen there. And we gotta, we gotta finish this. I'd love to be able to spend $25,000 and get it done. We can almost do it ourselves. Well, that's an option. Um, the whole cabinets from Home Depot, we order the appliances. I'm trying to figure out a way to keep costs down, do some of the work ourselves just through purchasing, and then hire a guy to come in and install it all. That's, uh, I'm hoping that's where we can take this. Um, uh, please, you know, laugh at this if, if you choose to, but um, I, I hear many people utilize Craigslist for jobs, mm -hmm. and maybe we're looking at a company 
that will laugh at us for this about for the scale of the project because they normally do so much bigger projects. Maybe just finding a lower level. Well, I'm looking at lower level contractors now for this, yeah. like a guy that would come into your home to maybe do yeah, a yeah, 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 exactly. Not so, necessarily handyman. I'd like to get a licensed general contractor, no, yeah, but I don't need a DIR registered contractor yeah, that builds right, airports. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. so I mean, this is, Post it on Craigslist, what, what do we have to yeah, lose at this right. point? I mean, uh, yes, obviously we require insurance, we require uh, right. license, bonding, yes. etc. But, you know, we don't need to have the DIR service. Uh, I actually have placed a lot of faith in John Pope, so I was a little disappointed today when that email came through. Um, but I put that in round file and I'm on to the next thing. But, you know, I really would like to get this done. We may not be able to do it for $25,000. I can't promise you that here today. But I, I actually think if we do it, you know, in-house, buy appliances ourselves, we, we can. I, I'm, I'm looking at it, but I can tell you is I haven't seen that yet since Christine left. And even then, I mean, we were bare bones in it, so. So we can pretty much take this off the agenda. Yeah, no, there's nothing to approve here tonight. I, it's in my garbage can. Question. Yes. Is, is there anything in the plans that can be cut? Is anything? Yes. Is it real bare bones? No, there's a cup. I, I went through John Pope's bid today and compared it to the plans that he used. And I think with some tweaking of the plans, just with John Pope, there was about a $20,000 savings. So I think we need to revisit the plans a little bit and simplify it. Can you give us an example of what you think is? You can jettison from the plan. I mean, what what type of things are you talking? Uh, about? They were including some things like lighting and flooring, which are not flooring, flooring obviously. Flooring yeah, I know, but he had ten thousand dollars in for flooring. Oh. He's got he had five thousand dollars in for painting the kitchen. I mean, <laughs> I'll paint the kitchen for three thousand. We'll call it even. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's time for a barn raising party. <laughs> I really do. I, pro I still my promise work. is holding true is there will be a solid working kitchen in there before I'm gone. But between Craigslist and between utilizing our guys, uh, I really don't see a reason why we can't do it under 25. I don't know. Just out of curiosity, if you cost it out yourself, cabinets, sink, plumbing, appliances. I cost it out cabinets and countertops through Home Depot. Uh -huh. and? and it was about uh, 29,000. Really? And that was for like granite countertops, which are not high end, and like a mid level. A mid level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for a mid level uh, cabinetry. Okay. I mean, Ikea. Just, saying. Well, the, just the cabinets and the countertops are that magnitude. There's no way you're going <laughs> to beat that $25,000 ceiling. Yeah. This makes sense. My kitchen cost 30 grand, no, 15 grand, sorry, not 30, 15, and that was years ago. I'm still working. Good condition. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I don't know if you guys read anything I send you, but one of the things I've sent you, you just go, we actually yes. do read. Okay, so so one of the things I sent you was 10 by 10 kitchen, pure oak, and then there was another one that was cherry. It's from China. You have to build it like Ikea, but it was like two grand. I mean, I can tell you that a $2,000 cabinetry in the firehouse would last three weeks. <laughs> it's the same cabinetry. No, it's not. Stephen. There's also a place in Oakland that you can get pre-made cabinets from China. I, I know this because I've, I've, I've costed this out. People know about this, these things. I mean, you can go to Home Depot and they will have a designer and they will give you a price. And if you just shop a little harder, I, I think you can get what you need. I, I, I want you to have a kitchen, uh, Chief. I want want the guys to have a kitchen. I want them to have a good kitchen, a kitchen that lasts. And I don't think you should put cheap stuff in there. I think you should put solid stuff in there that's going to last. But I don't think the, there's necessarily a guarantee by going through uh, some of these contractors or even Home Depot that you're going to get um, a quality, any greater quality cabinet that you would if you sourced it a little harder. If you want, I can I'd be happy to uh, Give you those sources. I don't have them off the tip of my, my tongue tonight. Any other comments? 
Okay, okay. I guess the next you're gonna have a fire. Yeah, there'll be a fire fish meeting the first week of uh, August. Um, August first. I will not be able to attend as the board liaison, so if anybody else would like to jump in at this opportunity. Thank you. I'll reach out to you guys and see if you all right. Uh, a follow up to something that Chief mentioned, and then apparently yeah, I asked that the emergency generator is checked every Saturday morning. As I remember, we used to do that about 20 years ago. So that's standard. But apparently, isn't standard is to energize the emergency system from that generator and see if that works. And I'm just suggesting that possibly that be included in maybe a monthly, monthly. check or something. But I think it's a routine thought. process. I had the same thought. Now, you said there was, the problem was a plug. Is that generator hardwired into a system or no. do you plug it in? We, we have to plug it in. Do you still have the switch yep. that doesn't let any power go out yes. into the neighborhood of yes. that generator? Okay. <laughs> Remember how it was when you were here? Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just the new generator. We're a little dated. <laughs> exactly. Remember the old Boy Scout generator in the back? Yeah. We've upgraded slightly. Okay. <laughs> On to park and rec. Draft minutes. No questions. Go for it. No questions. No questions. No questions. No questions. Anybody? I have a comment. Please. Uh, apparently, Commissioner Toon suggested that the policy be developed for memorials. I think that's great. Uh, I just think that's because we eventually, we eventually, eventually we may want to be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah, they that came from their reading of the last minutes here. Um, he suggested in the commission uh, certainly. Uh, Agreed with him that it was something that the commission could take on with the initial drafting. He's actually already got copies of a couple other local areas, kind of memorials, memorial policy. Um, I've taken a brief look at it. It'll be added to the PNR agenda for the next time. They will go through, make some refinements, and bring it up to a point where uh, they would be comfortable as a commission recommending it to the board. Okay. Just out of curiosity, why does a park and rec commission make a take a stab at doing something that probably should happen at the board level. Because all of these things actually occur within usually the parks. Oh. Or, or the or the, recre <laughs> or the recreation facilities. Yeah. <laughs> like the Howie Council back on the Bill Gordon, mm -hmm. the bag shop, and that's considered park and Alley Stone. Okay. Okay. Anybody? <coughs> From the public? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, this is, I mean, this is a general thing. I, you know, um, I'm sorry I didn't go to the last of this, this meeting, but um, I, I'm going to say it again. We, that panhandle area is really beat down. It's com compressed soil, and it needs actually some restoration, but then it needs to be left alone to to restore itself. Um, in addition to that, I, well, I guess I, I'd like to see some um, park benches in there. We have a lot of elderly people that use that trail uh, with, with uh, nurses and all sorts of things, or, uh, and um, they, they should be accommodated. Um, I think it's, it, it would be a, a benefit to the community. That's it. Okay. Anybody else? Um, to park maintenance facility replacement initiative update. Sure. Um, I tried to be pretty detailed in the memo I delivered there last week on Thursday. Shane and I had the opportunity to uh, sit in front of what's known as the Marin Project Coordination Group. Um, this is a very informal meeting of several environmental regulatory uh, agencies. Uh, the whole list is there. I'm not going to read them all off. We presented them with the uh, site plans that we had had, uh, walked them through the project. I kind of gave them each a little packet that included uh, 
things that are already on the website or came out through the uh, community meeting. Uh, all in all, uh, the project was, uh, it's not their job to make opinions on the project. Their job to basically state from their agency's perspective. Several of the agencies based on the project said that they uh, did not foresee any level of permit uh, requirements from their agencies that included Regional Water Quality Control Board, the Army Corps of Engineers, as well as uh, the National Oceanic NOAA uh, uh, Fisheries. Um, Fish and Wildlife did say that there is a possibility uh, however, he didn't think that was highly likely, and he also seemed to express more concern with the demolition of the old building than he did with the way we were presenting plans for the new sites. Uh, I do think that there was uh, a lot of positive feedback and that everything was moving farther away from the creek compared to where the current thing was. Um, so they appreciated that. Um, there was a representative uh, during our presentation there from Marin County uh, Department of Public Works and the Land Use Division who clarified what the count Title 24 setback requirements are, uh, which I put in here, I quoted actually in here uh, from Marin County Code 2404560. Um, so we have a good gauge on what that actual requirement is. Uh, otherwise, uh, again, very informal setting for them, feedback uh, was interesting, it was helpful, it was good, we'll be able to, you know, when Herb has a little time, finalize kind of looking at what those site plans are, and then the next step on this will be contacting the county planning department for a pre-application consultation meeting. So basically walking them through all four site locations, showing them the site plans, taking those feedbacks prior to actually starting to submit uh, any level of planning apps, but based on what that consultation says, the next step then would be to look into designers who could really kind of take it to the next level that we would have something to bring to the planning department. When are you planning on this meeting with the planning department? Um, as soon as I can coordinate their schedule, my schedule, and our schedule. Just for the pre <laughs> For the pre for the pre consultation <coughs> meeting, correct. Okay. okay. Let's roll with this. Let's roll. Yay. Before Do you think it'll get done this budget year? No. <laughs> what, you mean the facility? Yeah. Replacing? Yeah. Are you out of here? Well, uh, budget year? This budget year? <laughs> next, su <laughs> next summer? Budget year, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it won't be before this winter, that's for sure. Well, this budget year is probably yeah, yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. That's what he just said. He's <laughs> like, shut up, you can't get a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other comments? Sir? Hi, my name is Ray Lorber. I'm the chairman for Miller Creek Watershed Stewards. <coughs> Eric's familiar with me. I am surprised that I have not been included in this shit he's talking about. I've received notes from that all I've had an email this afternoon late for seven o'clock. The construction of this shit. We have great concerns about the closure to Miller Creek. Would like to be included in the analysis that you've done so far. Okay. Isn't most of what we've done so far um, published on the website? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I've not notified them. Uh, well, because you don't live in in Marinwood. I'm the chairman of the Noel Creek Wheelchair Stores. Eric, okay. you're with me. I'm concerned about what's happening in Noel Creek. Understood. We'll do a better job of making sure you're included. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stephen. Uh, yes. Um, I wonder if Eric could uh, provide the names of the people that he spoke to. I mean, we, we have a nice anecdotal uh, uh, report, but um, it's really not a detailed report, and the conclusions uh, and representations are meaningless unless we know who the, those person were uh, who said these things and what specifically they said and also what specifically was was offered as plans i don't know what the four plans are i assume because of history here that did you, did you do something with the firehouse is that one of the ones that you submitted these nothing was submitted 
You had a packet, though. Did it include a plan for the uh, next to the firehouse? No. Okay. So it, it included the three sites that the environmental. These were strictly environmental groups. Okay. So um, they didn't offer any opinion on any of the sites, one over the other, or anything like that. They're strictly looking at them from a, a regulatory uh, agency perspective. Okay. So you are extending uh, the district legally quite a bit, I think. Um, I, uh, first of all, I want to say you're, you're absolutely correct about the Marin County uh, Code, although I think it's 25 feet. Uh, but anyhow, <laughs> and there is also a stream conservation ordinance, which you did not mention, but it exists. And uh, in my conservation, my conversations with the, uh, the planning department, they take that seriously, even though it's not full uh, a full ordinance at this time. They do consider it part of what. Done. If you uh, what needs to be done for development. Now, right now, it is a commercial industrial facility. You've got commercial industrial chemicals stored on site. Um, these are, I guess, six, you know, they're cancerous. They're, they're 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 heavy metals. There's all kinds of stuff. You're parking the dump truck on the bank that uh, that gave way a few years ago. Um, basically, the existing um, structure sit is directly on the, the stream bank, um, and you've got at least seven neighbors who are very strongly opposed to this. And I do have the tape of the meeting. It seems like none of the uh, public concerns really were uh, considered going forward, and so um, and. You just made some comments, let's go, let's go, let's go. I don't know what the hell you guys should think you're doing. I mean, really, you, you've got to pay attention to the environment. You also have to pay attention to the, the public. And um, I, I think to ignore that is to ignore your responsibilities as representatives of the public. That's your responsibility. You're not decision makers for the public. You're representatives of the public. And you're also stewards of this this um, this park, okay? So there's a, been a lot of bad things done in this park over the years. Gary uh, shored up the uh, the riverbank uh, next to the maintenance shed years ago illegally without any permits, throwing concrete into the, the stream bank. He did it again when they pulled out some sidewalks because he needed to get rid of some concrete. I want to bring you guys into present day, not, not do 1950s uh, style environmentalism. I want you to do responsible environmentalism as of today. And if you're not going to hold yourself to the standards, Eric, are you paying attention? I'm, I'm going to hold standards. you guys responsible. To me well, I, 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 I'm, I, hold on. Let's not raise our voices, please. OK, if it, fine. It's I, I expect professionalism and integrity in the, the, uh, uh, in the management of our parks, OK? That's fine, Stephen. Keep it calm. And Thank keep you. it responsible. That's all math. Thank you for pointing out all of the reasons why we need to replace the existing structure. Secondly, I would like to point out that the primary goal is not necessarily to please the public. It is to provide a safe environment for our staff where they don't have to worry about being electrocuted, okay? The building floods. That's a primary thing. Second, that's an admission that it's in, in the. In, protecting, okay, I'm sorry. Protecting assets from rusting and being destroyed or having chemicals, as you pointed out, wash into the creek. There's every reason in the world to make this change and to up, upgrade that facility move it away from the bank. If it happens to upset a couple of people that are nearby, um, I would recommend that they also consider that when they bought their houses, the facility was there at the same time. <coughs> right? May I, ask, may I ask how far from the 
the lower creek where the new shed be located? Well outside the 20 foot. Um, it would certainly be outside the Title 24. That's still to be determined. All, all the site plans, right? I'm happy to walk down there with you and I'll meet you there personally anytime. Let me show you where we're at. Yeah. Uh, anytime you want. I mean, you and I have done these kind of things before in the past and worked sure. in the past. Um, obviously, everything is going uh, to, to have allegations that we're not paying attention to environmental concerns is simply mislabeling and misinformation. Um, that's that's exactly, exactly why we meet with all. Yeah. I know you have, and I'm certainly not accusing you of doing that. One of the things uh, that I, I do hear is the concern about the pool and what you should do to protect the pool from the Washington debris. It kind of reminds me of the bridge over Lucas Valley Road up by the Central the, 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 the Road. They have requests for protection from washing out their bridge over Lucas Valley Road multiple times. And they've repaired it multiple times during a disaster. They always have funds for a disaster. They never have funds and timing and planning to do it correctly. It's been a nasty, nasty situation multiple times. And it sounds similar to what we were talking about here this evening, of, uh, of not having enough time and money and resources to do the planning, which might take several years, but you have resources to do an emergency when it does wash out. But, uh, not a good idea to With do regard that. to this particular facility, we are trying to plan this. We are right. also um, we also have um, what's called Measure A funds yes. available for this particular purpose. To the extent that we'll cover the entire cost is um, still to be right. determined. But we do have funds, and we're trying to do this right. Okay. Um, we've also engaged the community, and we realize there are people who live by where the current site is who may not be thrilled with having it rebuilt. But um, the fact is that from an infrastructure standpoint, from the opportunity to move away from the creek and protect the creek, we have an opportunity there as well. And we will be looking at that. And we'd love your input. Please. Do you have uh, the names of the people that you contacted? Not in front of me, no. But do you, you, do you have them? Uh, I, I know who was at the meeting, yeah. So can you provide that to me? Sure. Okay. And their statements? I s simply want documentation. If they're, you know, you're, they're saying what they're it's an saying. It's informal meeting, Stephen. Minutes aren't taken at this So point. if it's, it's an, an informal meeting, then why are you wrap presenting it as a formal assessment? Okay. It's an update, Stephen. The meeting is non-binding and informal, intended to provide a forum for interaction and input of projects in the early planning phases. That's what's documented okay. right here in this sentence two. Okay, everyone in this room is aware that there is a perfectly uh, good site that it has no problems that uh, with the creek. Okay, this is the, and you haven't even you haven't even looked at it. Okay, you you dismissed it out of hand because. I, I'm not even sure. Maybe it was because I presented it, but but actually I got it from one of the uh, guys in the maintenance department. He said there's plenty of room, and look, there's plenty of room out there. So I think it's just being stubborn on your behalf not to, to uh, deal with this uh, environmental concern, and also this I, is park area too. It, you've got three guys. They've got four vehicles. They've got an anchor acre and a half of uh, space that they've scraped clean, and that is really our parkland. It needs to go back to parkland. Yeah. I'm going to respond, and then I'm going to ask Bill. I think we probably wrap this thing up. And the very last sentence of the thing clearly says that uh, we prepared to present all four site options to the Marin County Planning Department for a pre-application consultation meeting. So it's one of those floors is correct. It's over there. So correct. That has not been brought before. Thing. It has not been brought before the public. So it, are, it was, is in the minutes right here in this report. The that plan has itself. The update. No, no. The plan itself. The plan itself has not been presented. We presented three we plans. Said through. which which flavor do you want? We went through a uh, public meeting, did we not? Park and Rec Commission. Correct. Yeah. And it's clearly stated what all four options say for us. Actually, we presented two plans, to, and out of the committee, out of the meeting, we it was suggested that we look at two other 
alternative locations. Okay. So just so you know, the, the, the neighbors are getting together on this, and they will be addressing the board. Okay, so I, I just, all, all I can say is please, please look at all the warning signs, look at your responsibilities, do the right thing, and don't try to force your will on the rest of the community. They're not going to buy it. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Moving on. Recreation and park maintenance activity report. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. I just have one question. Um, can we at some point meet Kay and Kelly? Uh, sure. Formally? Yeah. Um, I can see you come to a board meeting. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I don't have any other questions. Uh, first, I want to thank Shane for adding this section on land design in the report so that we know what the contractor is doing. But I, I have a question because you said, uh, I think last meeting or somewhere in here, that, they're, that the contractor is upset because we said they couldn't spray. And my question is, because I got from Tom Horn some time back a copy of their contract. For some reason, I can't find it anymore. But it's my recollection that this was a performance-based contract. They had things they had to do on certain intervals in certain areas. But it appears from this that no, this is a contract where they provide 18 hours of labor every week to do as much as they can get done in 18 hours. What, which way are we going with this? So the contract is performance-based. From the time they've started, they've, they've sent a crew out every Friday. I don't know how many hours they're here on any given day. I normally check in with them once, like early in the morning to see where they're working. Obviously, I don't sit out there all day with them. Um, they have come more than once a week when we've said that, you know, they're falling by the schedule. Um, so yeah, they're, but historically they come every Friday and that's been their routine. When we've told them, you know, you're consistently not keeping up at certain times of the year, they have, you know, sent out an extra crew or what have you, but they also kind of are referring back to, you know, when we first took this contract on, we were under the impression that we could spray certain areas that are extremely time consuming that we have to come back and mow every, you know, three or four weeks and we're not going to be able to, you know, gather three days a week mowing uh, all the open space areas is what they come back to me with. Um, they have been working with us, you know, to try to keep things um, kept up a little better. Um, and it's kind of like a cat and mouse game. I'll get them to kind of where we need to be. And then uh, for a couple of weeks, I've got to contact them again and kind of redirect them to certain areas or have them send out an extra two. Is the current agreement that we do not, you know, use chemicals, the weed abatement or anything our, like anywhere? Our current IPM, not a contractor with them, but our current um, integrated pest management plan right. is, yeah, Pretty much, we don't spray for any reason. If we did have to spray, it's something that I believe we have to come through to the we, board for our we, permission. The IPM basically says that we explore all planning and alternative methods before. Before, we but it does resources. not restrict us from not spraying Correct. if we feel the need. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, does that not extend to their contract? Their contract states that they can spray, but it also states that they follow. We. Our, our, our IPM. Uh, okay. Which, by the way, both those documents are on the website. Right. But the contract is on the website, too. If uh, you wanted to see a copy of it, you can find it there. Um, we have asked them not to spray for the time being. That, that's come from a directive from us, which they're not really thrilled about because it makes their ability to uh, control the weeds much harder. Sure. Understood. Much more labor intensive. Okay, let's use that term instead. And, and then coming back to us, basically, we can keep things maintained to a higher level, but we're going to need to revisit the contract and what, how much we're paying them. But there's going to be more time. Um, I'm shocked. May, may I, uh, uh, let me go actually to um, uh, placing it on the uh, future agenda item. But um, maybe we should look at you know, what's the time. Um, that they are servicing us um, throughout the year, which roughly 
you know, I did the three people times six hours times 52 weeks, so that's about 960, uh, 936 hours a year, so that's under 1,000 hours per year, so that might be a part-time, non-benefit employee who could be directly accountable to us. Something to explore. And you know, with the amount of money we're paying them, 120,000 a year, Correct? No, we're paying them like thirty thousand. Thirty thousand? Yeah. Twenty nine hundred a month. Where do they get my money? Uh, I just ended uh, up. Okay. Excellent. So, Death well, correct. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were they were a little bit. Are you going into the weed abatement? <laughs> 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 the, the chemicals of the shadow. Anyway. <laughs> so I think that's it. Thank you. 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 And just real quickly, we did um, have a uh, tree company start working on two of the three burn areas of the Lucas Valley to do some of the bigger, taller stuff um, that our park guys can't get to. So they did that last week, and our park guys will be back up there to kind of clean up um, some of that area and then finish off the last burn the next over the next two weeks. So they cut off like the bike, cleared like the bike path area off of Lucas Valley Road, um, and they took out four trees that were dead. Um, so we're making progress up there. But the contractor's uh, performance, evaluation, performance standard or contract, as I recall, says they're to remove all the dead trees. But we're doing it. Uh, well, if you remember, we had them up there, and that's when we had the explosion of neighbors. Mm -hmm. They were complaining that they were taking, you know, living things up too high. And so that's where we're going to get it to where, where we think it's acceptable for everybody. And then we're going to have them maintain it from there on out. And I mean, they, I, I could be wrong, but them as far as removing dead things, they're talking about things, you know, shrub oaks and those types of things. And I mean, we're taking out, you know, 30 foot redwood trees, which they're not going to do. So it's 3,000 dollars monthly for the Yeah, I just have a question. Does that in include brush removal? I know. I, I, I just have a couple questions. Are they are they doing the panhandle there? Yeah. Okay. So so we've got some brush down there, um, and do they remove brush? And is that part of what they get paid for, or do we, how does that work? It's very specific to each area. Like for example, like the, the pathways. You know, right. they cut the weeds down to a you know minimal level right they blow the areas the the medians they you know will go through and hedge bushes that type of thing um that's so and they remove the the, the debris what's that do they remove the debris yeah if they do hedging okay. yeah they have to remove okay. the debris and 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 the brush i mean when they they go into the walk paths they didn't do it one time i brought it to your attention i think they did clear it out after that but yeah they should be they should be clearing it out okay all right And that date of the next Park and Recreation meeting is July 25th. Oh, is, is there, are you going to have a rep? I, I was going to uh, make a comment on rep. Pardon me? Can I make, I, I was going to make a comment on rep. I didn't realize it. I thought we were doing park and then rep. We just did. Okay, so let me make a few comments on rep. Um, in, in June, the month of June, uh, virtually every weekend was taken up on uh, Saturday with Water Devils uh, swim meets. And uh, if someone was a member and works in the city, there was almost no time for them to swim over uh, in the park. Um, and while we like the Water Devils, we want to support the Water Devils, I'm not sure if we need to host all the, the swim meets, but this year it just seemed really bad and then in addition to that there was a, a training so one weekend you couldn't swim at all uh, you couldn't swim laps at all which was totally messed up so I I actually had this conversation with Shane so I'm repeat, repeating this with that to the board I am requesting what's that I said thank you so I'm request requesting that um, we have additional uh, uh, lap swimming times during the evenings on Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's a very minimal request. 
for uh, between the hours of 7 and 8.30. This will allow, uh, will take off some of the pressure on the swim lanes during the noontime hours since all this aggressive marketing that has been done through Groupon and everything else, we have a ton of people swimming laps at the same time. There's a the office group. Finished. There's there's no more swim meets or I I, I, I understand. Excuse me, may I continue? So um, these office workers, there's about probably a half dozen to ten of them. They show up at the same time. They, uh, we who are members are trying also to swim during that time, and it's basically it's madhouse. So the the the, the lap swim time really needs to be managed. There's ways to manage it through pricing. Our pricing is way off, way off. Um, and uh, if this goes back to revenue, if we increase the revenue and not try to treat all all uh, customers as basically the same we can um, lessen the demand and bring in more revenue. I hope that's a, something that you will take in good consideration and I not make noise like you seem to be right. What? Is, it is what it is. Um, laugh go. Well, to be respected. Update. Laugh go, sure. Uh, so again, quite recently uh, received an update from LAFCO that I've actually included in the packet everything that I received. Uh, it kind of lays out their proposed plan for their upcoming studies, uh, ultimately over about the next five years. Uh, one thing to, thanks Ray. Uh, you know how to track me down. One thing to, uh, that I wanted to bring in, in attention, I mean, and I remember uh, Keen Simon, the executive officer of LAFCO, came in what seemed like one of my very first meetings potentially here in early 2015, uh, mentioning the studies coming in. Obviously, uh, they haven't proceeded at the schedule that they would like, but they have finally looked to schedule the San Rafael area study, which does include Marinwood Community Services District in this upcoming fiscal year. Um, this has not been approved by their commission. Uh, me, personally, I would actually be very interested to see this study completed. I'd very much like to see what findings come out of this study. Uh, and I would very much uh, encourage that uh, I write a letter on the board's behalf um, to the commission to be submitted at their meeting when they do actually make this vote to finalize the schedule, supporting the decision to include the Center Bell area study in this upcoming fiscal year. I want to support Eric's recommendation. Uh, it dovetails with what the chief told us about. Fire commission is going to be studying fire service. I'll turn to include a study from last month. So it would be very good timing for them to be working on this uh, sooner or better. Anybody else? Any comments? Be interesting to see if consolidation had any positive impact on the citizens of Greenwood. <coughs> What's the other thing? What's it cost? Mm -hmm. What's it look like? Mm -hmm. These are all things to to take into account. Yeah. It says we don't need to improve this. this right. It's just really good. Good. So, I mean, they're they're pretty far behind in this. Uh, if I re recollect, I remember King Simon showing up too, and they said the study was imminent, and it never happened. Right? Is this just bureaucratic? And and uh, I think that they, the commission redirected them towards other things. They've been doing a lot of studying of kind of water departments, sewer departments, uh, wastewater management, things like that up and down the county. I think they're hopefully finally wrapping those studies up and now they're moving into the other broader municipal service review studies. Okay. And that includes about six CSAs as well, right? Uh, everything that falls within, yeah, on the back page, everything that falls within the Santa Fe area would be CSA number six, which is Santa Benicia, number nine, which is North, North Bridge, 13, which is Upper Lucas Valley, just up the road here, 18, Lenas Village, 19, which is another unincorporated area of Santa Fe, and then 23, which is some of the unincorporated parts of town. 19 is like... Uh, Source Scabella. Farms, right? Santa Benicia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Would this be stronger if it came from the board instead of from you, from Eric? Um, 
It could certainly come from the uh, board president, sure. I'd be happy to draft one with your name on it for you. That's what he was looking for. It would be my pleasure to no. sign such a document. No problem. And by definition, draft into attending all the meetings. <laughs> okay, well, and again, we have, uh, in the past, we've talked about having a, a member of the board attend meetings, and I don't know if we actually do. Do you attend these meetings? You attend Mira, right? Well, I'm going to laugh up. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, I'm, I'm the liaison. The liaison and really? the Eric keeps me informed as to when something's coming up on the agenda that he thinks I should be there. Got it. Okay, cool. So we're luckily perfect. he hasn't found anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> I keep him apprised of what's going on there. Okay. Well, I forward cool. a lot of information there. All right, I lost sight of that. Thank you. Quite all right. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Oh, oh Stephen. Um, so, uh, some of you may not want to hear this, but uh, there was a bill uh, that was heard, I think, today in Sacramento, SB 35, which will, uh, if passed, will allow uh, uh, affordable housing uh, developers to have buy right approval. In other words, the community has absolutely no control, no input on the uh, on the developments that come into their community. Um, it stands to affect our future operations in a big sort of way. Now, Bill doesn't want to hear this because he thinks it's all going to be decided by someone else, but it will affect every single one of us in dramatic ways and the finances of the district. I encourage, in addition to LAFCO, that you pay attention to what's going on in the broader scheme of things, because uh, Marinwood in particular, because we are unincorporated, is particularly vulnerable to uh, uh, actions against our community, whereas an uh, uh, incorporated community would have uh, some sort of recourse if stuff came down. It, it's just going to happen to us by, by uh, imperial uh, decisions. And so that's all I have to say. And that and LAFCO is going to be part of that uh, uh, change as well. Thank you. Request for a future meeting agenda items. You had the, um, the forecast, I think, is worth looking at at some point. The long the term forecast, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, you know, looking at um, alternatives to the current land design contract, because they originally their contract was for a year, and um, I think Shane, you, you doubt that we would be able to contract with anybody else at this price, right? Yeah. But um, I don't know. That, short of you know hiring a, a part timer for us working directly for us. I don't know if that would be uh, feasible, but. Okay. Is sure. there anything from precluding us from doing that? From hiring a part-time person? Yeah. If, the, if things don't work out. I mean, if, um, I think you mentioned earlier that they're you know, likely going to want to completely renegotiate the contract, and what if that's infeasible? Yeah, I mean, the land design and one of the, and Gardner's Guild were the two kind of low bidders in the process. Everybody else was double, triple the price, mm -hmm. um, and that was quite a few years ago. And yeah. we've seen the state of the union as far as uh, what people are charging for things right now. Um, so yeah, it could be something we look at. The only issue is, you know, when you are doing work like that, you don't really want just one person out there. We it would be, right. be in addition to who we already have, you know, obviously yeah. like to complement yeah. the crew that we already have. Correct. Yeah, yeah. understood. we got the trucks and the trailers and the rollers and the saws, so it's not just the... Yeah, they come They come equipped for the job, that yeah, specific job, but... Yeah. So it would be sort of splitting up the uh, assets that we have if we were to yeah, send crews out. Yeah, and wear and tear on our equipment. I mean, yeah. they, they come out there 
they're efficient for the time they're here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. It sounds like having somebody like that to you know fill in um, is best. And this is, I think, wasn't this a reaction to staff reductions? Yes. Correct. Staff reductions, yes. and it's kind of the redundant, uh, yeah. you know, busy work. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. And yeah, we do have a part-time, I mean, there's a part-time position within the parks department that is budgeted that we do bring in uh, for well under a thousand hours a year. Mm -hmm. And then they kind of come in during the busier seasons for the park where the three guys just cannot possibly keep up with what needs to be done and they're working on some of the smaller, uh, less technical right. type of things that we need help with. Yeah, so we just need to focus on, you know, this third party. Yeah, and they normally do catch up. It's, it's during that spring first three months of spring or whatever I mean, that mm -hmm. the winter cleanup the yeah, yeah and just well I mean yeah as soon as spring is the weeds we'll, just every we'll two put weeks. that on the agenda for next month I, I guess not because if you I don't know it's up, up to you I just I'm trying to find a solution I mean it's kind of up to the I mean I'm fine just you know working with them for right now but mm -hmm. you see how things are you know some months look better than others um, they're more than happy to come talk to the board, but I have a feeling it's going to end with them one. I've kind of just kept things going because we're, we're getting a good rate. Uh -huh. um, and if they do come, they're going to want to, I'm assuming, negotiate for higher rate. Higher rate and coming more. Yeah, is, is there a contract that's expiring? It's the contract expiring. expired after a year, so we've just been, they've been trying to get me to re-up for a year, but I was like, no, we're doing month to month. So we've been on a month to month contract for two years now, I think. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> If, if and when we ever need to discuss this, and I don't know if we'll do it sooner rather than later or whatever, but I think one of the things we could look at is the Marine Conservation Corps. Yeah, they've, even they've gone, they're pretty expensive. Not only are they expensive, they're swamped. I use them for the vegetation management projects in the community, and I mean, I, I have to schedule them six months out, and they're not cheap. Okay. But I do appreciate the mission and every good luck. Is that it? Recognitions and board member items of interest. Oh, I, you, you didn't. I'm sorry. Um, I had a, a suggestion. Um, I'm going to make it. Can you, you, or the, the, you close the request the, for board meeting agenda items. Yeah. I asked. Yes, and I uh, held my anything. place. I held my place while you spoke. Right? What, okay. what are you suggesting for a board? For a board I'm society? suggesting that we, uh, one, um, I uh, got blank faces when we were talking about revenues, but I find it actually shocking that we don't know where our cash revenues are coming and going and how the money is spent. That needs to be taken care of. Did you look at the budget that we just put through last month? The, I'm, I'm talking about the. I'm That's talking about the for small revenues and. Okay. So, on a Saturday, for example, when you have lots of people coming in, the paying cash, I assume, to enter the uh, pool. What's happening with that cash? How is it being spent? Where is it being recorded? Something like that, okay? That, you're an accountant, you don't find that? We made $1,560 last Saturday and yes. 1480 on Sunday at the pool. Oh, I, and 250 to 300 dollars in vending both days. So we analyze it daily, we know where it goes. I mean, it goes to the bank, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then we use it to pay some of the bills. But, uh, why isn't, being, why isn't it being reported is really the question. It, gets, it's, it does get reported and gets fed into the, to the budget into our end of the year um, results that we get. It, it, it just seems to me that we don't have complete information um, in, our, in the reporting, okay? Um, and I think it's really, really important because we want to make sure that we're bringing in as much money as possible from all the great work that you do. Um, there's that, and then number two, um, you know, the future is going to come whether you like it or not. And I think it, the board, being the only deliberative body in this CSD, should uh, have a meeting talking about some of the issues 
that some of the challenges that are going to be happening in this valley, because we know it's going to be here. I'm sure Damon Connolly would love to come and speak to the community as well. Um, so those are my two suggestions. That's an agenda item? No, discussing it and uh, scheduling a meeting. Okay. So um, some time ago we did, we, we did have discussions about um, periodic publication of financial statements and stuff during the year. Make them up quarterly. Quarterly, quarterly, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can count on that happening. So um, that, that has been. Yeah, that published. gives us a, an idea on right. a periodic basis of how we're right. doing vis-a-vis -vis the budget, right. et cetera, et cetera, correct? Right. 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 And as we go actually through the budget approval process, yeah. they're actually updated more than quarterly. Yes, understood. Okay, cool. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. And if there's nothing else, we I got, I got something I just wanted to bring up again. Caesar Korea had uh, twins, a little boy Austin, a little girl Mia. Uh, they're all home, seem to be doing well. Caesar's taking a couple of weeks off to give a hand around the house, although I hear he's ready to come back to work. <laughs> Probably a day yeah. or two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had a pretty good pancake breakfast. A lot of people, a lot of the volunteers and pay guys were down there helping out. It was a good turn. It was a nice day. And Shane's guys did a pretty good job in front of the firehouse and doing some landscape upkeep, plus it was very entertaining because they were right outside my office. Mm -hmm. It's a work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Great. All right, that's all we've got, and we have to go in and close it. Yep.